Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about how to find out the necessary condition for three lines to be concurrent. Meaning, what is the condition for these three lines to intersect each other at a single point? In a previous video, I have discussed about the necessary condition for two lines to be concurrent and I have shared the link in the description, feel free to watch the video. In this particular video, we are going to find out what is that condition that will tell us whether the three lines are concurrent or not. As I discussed in the previous video, we can use the cross multiplication method to solve for x and y using two of these equations. Let's suppose we are going to use the second and third equations here and let's try to find out the value of x and y. So if we solve the second and third equations, we are going to get the value of x and y like this. So solving the second and third equations, we see that the value of x and y going to be like this. Now if the first equation also have to intersect these other two lines at the same point, then the coordinates of that intersection point of the second and third line must satisfy the first equation. So now if we use this value of x and y in the first equation, what are we going to get? Well, we are going to get something like this. So that is a sub 1 times the value of x and then I am going to substitute the value of y in the first equation. So that would be b sub 1 times the value of y plus we have the c sub 1 and all of this is equal to 0 and if we simplify this, let's multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator here. We have a common denominator which is a sub 2 times b sub 3 minus a sub 3 times b sub 2. So we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by that quantity. Then obviously on the left hand side, we are going to be left with just the numerators here. So it would be a sub 1 times b sub 2 c sub 3 minus b sub 3 times c sub 2 plus b sub 1 times c sub 2 times a sub 3 minus c sub 3 times a sub 2 plus c sub 1 times it will be multiplied by the denominator that we are multiplying on both sides of the equation. So it would be c sub 1 times a sub 2 times b sub 3 minus a sub 3 times b sub 2 and all of this is equal to 0 and that is the necessary condition that tells us that hey these three lines are going to be concurrent if this quantity is equal to 0. The quantity that we see on the left hand side of this equation. So let me highlight this. Also if we rearrange this little bit we can write it like this. I am keeping the first term as is. So that is a sub 1 times b sub 2 times c sub 3 minus b sub 3 times c sub 2 and then I am going to use a negative sign and then I will say b sub 1 and then I am going to flip the sign of the two terms inside the parenthesis. So I am going to now write c sub 3 times a sub 2 as a positive quantity which was actually negative. I am writing it as a positive quantity and then minus c sub 2 times a sub 3 and plus I am going to keep the c sub 1 term as is. So c sub 1 times a sub 2 times b sub 3 minus a sub 3 times b sub 2 and if we rewrite it like this we can say well then this is a sub 1 times b sub 2 c sub 3 minus b sub 3 c sub 2 minus b sub 1 times a sub 2 times c sub 3. I am just writing it like this. I am just changing their position. It is still c sub 3 times a sub 2. I am just writing it as a sub 2 times c sub 3 minus a sub 3 times c sub 2 and then plus c sub 1 times a sub 2 times b sub 3 minus a sub 3 times b sub 2. All of this is equal to 0. Now if you look at the quantity on the left hand side, this is nothing but a nice little determinant of order 3. And how does the determinant look like? Well, it will look like this and that is equal to 0. So you can easily remember it like this that if the value of this determinant is 0, then the three lines are concurrent. And if you are not familiar with determinants, not a problem. You can still remember the previous expression or the previous condition that we established which is this one. And if that expression is also equal to 0, then also we can say that the three lines are concurrent. 
so whichever way is easier for you to remember you can remember it that way and it's very easy to remember you can say a sub 1 times within parenthesis it would be bc minus bc and then you simply plug in the value 2332 then b sub 1 times it would be c and a it would be a product of c and a you can say c sub 2 a sub 3 minus c sub 3 a sub 2 and plus c sub 1 times again it would be a product of a and b so it would be a sub 2 b sub 3 minus a sub 3 b sub to and that entire expression has to be zero for the three lines to be concurrent. So if we are given the equations of three straight lines all we have to do is we have to isolate the coefficients of x and y and the constant term and then use it in one of these expressions and then let's see if the value of that expression is zero if it is then we know that the three lines are concurrent and also you can do it using the determinant ultimately it's the same thing it's just two different look and feel the determinant and the expression the expression right here in the pink box and the determinant here they both are the same thing they both represent the same thing. Let me highlight the determinant also. So this is also another way of remembering that the three lines will be concurrent if this determinant's value is equal to zero. I hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.